Hi everyone, and today we're going to be talking about free will. That's something that we feel makes us human. The ability to make moral choices, the ability to look back and say, I could have done something differently, I should have done something differently. The ability to make choices that change ourselves, the world around us, and much further afield. And today we're gonna to be looking at the claim that free will is an illusion based on popular demand. Now, one of the videos I've had sent in to me more than once is a video called Free Will is an Illusion by a group called Aperture who are bringing the universe down to earth and have actually some very good material. Now, in this video, the narrator is gonna argue that actually what we think is free will and choices we think we make, we don't. The brain makes them for us before we're even aware that they have been made. So now let's take a look at the claim as it's made in their words. In the 1980s, Benjamin Libet, a physiologist, used an EEG, an electroencephalogram, to show that you can read and tell that somebody is about to move, 300 milliseconds before they decide in their conscious mind to actually move. This means that before we decide that we want to move our bodies, it's already been decided for us in our subconscious, and we only think that we made the decision ourselves after it's already been made. Now this Benjamin Libet experiment is one we hear again and again, it disproves free will. If I could see the brain his impulses getting all excited a moment before I thought, hey, I made the decision to move my right arm and actually 300 milliseconds before then the brain is getting excited, clearly wanting to move the right arm, then I'm suffering under the illusion of believing I made the decision where in fact my brain made it before my mind, my conscious mind was aware of it. The problem with this is manifold. First of all, imagine being the subject in that experiment and making that decision and then trying to report on exactly when you made the decision. You could try this yourself. Take your arm and at certain points decide to go like this and try to notice when you exactly make the decision. I can't tell you the exact split second I made the decision. If I was to report on it, it would probably be when I'd already started moving and not uh, the moment I actually make the decision. What is even called to make the decision? Right, suppose the brain was actually tracking that process and right now I'm putting a tension onto my right hand but I haven't yet made the decision to do it. The brain's gonna show certain signals relating to the attention to the, to the right hand. Now I'm thinking even more about it and I'm getting ready to move it. I haven't yet made the decision to do it. The brain is gonna show a lot of signals. Now I make the decision and do it. Again, there's no specific precise moment I make it. It's kind of one of the things that seems to lean up and we do it. The gap between a subject being able to report when they made the decision and the actual decision might already exist. Not only that, but there's a little bit more to it. And it actually comes up ironically in the next experiment that he refers to in this video to try to demonstrate that we don't have free will. Participants were asked to press one of the two buttons while looking at a clock with a random sequence of letters on a screen. With the use of fMRI, functional magnetic resonance imaging, they discovered that two of the participants' brain regions showed what button they would press seven to 10 seconds before they consciously made that decision. The results of this research only proves one thing. A few seconds before you pick the banana or the apple, your brain makes that decision for you. It is after this decision has been made deep in your subconscious that your brain becomes aware of it and we become convinced that we are in the process of making that decision. Now, let's just pause for a moment. This was a quite outrageous claim. You see, it's one thing to say I make a decision 300 milliseconds before I'm aware that I do. I might not notice the difference. This claim was just made that we make a decision seven to 10 seconds before. Now we would notice things like that happening all the time. We'd notice our arms starting to make funny movements before one second, oh yeah, let me move my arm. Or doing all sorts of activities all the time before my brain's caught up, seven to 10 seconds. In fact, I don't know which, he didn't quote which experiment this is, but there was one quite famous experiment where they noticed sounding exactly like the one he's talking about, I think it's exactly the same one. Sometimes the subject was making a decision allegedly to move their arm. The brain, you know, as the brain was noticing major brain activity relating to that movement before the image they're supposed to relate to has even appeared on the screen. In other words, that seems to show evidence that when this uh, fMRI is looking at the brain, it's not noticing a free will decision. It's noticing our attention going to that area of the body. Let's go back again to our hand squeezing. If, a, if someone's scanning my brain before I make a decision to move my hand, the brain is starting to focus on and think about the hand. So it seems that some of this research has not at all spoken about free will and brain processes, but it's actually just, just noticed the brain processes getting excited and starting to relate to the hand or the button to be pressed or whatever ever it is 
probably or possibly certainly before the decision is actually made. But once the decision's made, then the brain may come a second later. So none of this proves or disproves uh, free will at all. But it happens to be that anyway, these and many other videos about them all over the internet and arguments about free will seem to miss a fundamental point. The Talmud talks about free will and says, which means everything's in the hands of heaven, it's all determined, except for our awareness or fear, relationship with whatever it is, heaven. In other words, free will is not everything everywhere. I think everybody, even a strong defender of free will, knows that there's a huge amount that we delegate to our brain, consciously and subconsciously. Obviously, a vast majority of brain processes governing control over the body, we don't make free will decisions about. But even things that are quite conscious, like, should I have this food or this food, two items on the menu, we don't really need much free will in the conventional sense of moral choice and responsibility we can let the brain kind of work out which one we seem to think is gonna taste better, maybe balanced against cost or something. It seems to be a fairly automatic process and not one that we're going to necessarily do differently in exactly the same circumstances. We don't really need free will for all that. We have lots of instincts, lots of memories, lots of things that pull us, and if they don't 100% determine the decision, would, I don't know, 90% determine the decision, 90 something percent determine the decision. Where free will becomes really relevant is when a brain starts to give more than one answer. When more instinctive parts of our brain pull us in one way, but a higher part might pull us in another, and different voices are starting to articulate themselves, typically in moral decisions. Typically where one impulse says, hit someone in the face and something says, maybe not, and we now have free will. We've got to decide which one to go with. We're being pulled in multiple directions. Or should I focus and think about the meaning of life or should I just can't be bothered? Should I click on a gambling website that might be bad for me, etc. These are the sorts of things where we're being pulled in lots of directions where traditionally, where at least according to the Talmud and many of the traditional ideas of free will, and I think in personal introspection, we might feel that's where free will starts to play. That's when I look back at the decision and go, mm, I wish I'd have done this, or I'm so happy I chose that. I could have gone differently. I could have done better. I could have done less well. It's that sort of area that we refer to as free will. Now, even before we get into that sort of debate, I wanna leave with one thought on this video. Suppose everything that we just saw on this anti-free will claim was true. What on earth would be the point of the conscious mind? Why on earth would there be this huge evolutionary train developing this consciousness, taking an enormous amount of, of brain space to get there that serves absolutely no purpose whatsoever. And this consciousness seems to develop through the animal world so that by the time you get dogs and dolphins and monkeys and elephants, they seem to be able to pass a mirror test that demonstrates they've achieved an awareness of awareness, the kind of, or, or an awareness, a self-awareness. They're now, they can see something in a mirror and sooner or later figure it out it's them, which means they even have some kind of self-image. And what would that be for? And then you get to humans who have high levels of awareness of awareness and we can project what somebody else's awareness of thinking about us might be like. And what would it be for if all it is is kind of going for a ride, doing absolutely nothing whatsoever and just take up an enormous amount of brain space and activity as a great illusion. So coming back down to where this video is, this is a thing you see all over the place. Liberty disprove free will. This experiment, this experiment. First of all, even if we believed everything in the experiment, it wouldn't disprove free will in the areas that really count. For that, we need to have a proper brain scan of, of the types of areas of the dilemmas that we talk about where free will would really lie. But second of all, the experiment themselves don't seem to disprove free will, even in that limited area. They don't seem to disprove that we actually might make the decision before the brain process of actually wanting to move our hands. So let me know what you think about free will, or if there's any other videos you'd like me to talk about or comment on on this topic or any other. And of course, please use your free will or brain instincts to like, comment and share on this video.